Pure house and techno has survived every hype. And, and right now, just like five years ago, like 10 years ago, like 20 years ago, hypes come. And hypes come and they go. And they come and they go. Y ahora todo lo llaman techno, incluso la gente que no sabe. Pero eso está bien, porque eso también pone el foco en vamos a investigar qué es el techno. Ah, hay todas estas vertientes, hay uno más duro, uno más mental, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces, la gente se va decantando por uno u otro. Why it's becoming so popular right now is because we as humans are very occupied with, for example, the internet and social media and how you get perceived in, in life. Now it's too many, and there's this track, too many DJs, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, everyone has the right to try everything out, of course, um, but it became difficult, I think. O sea, ahorita nuestro punto de referencia más cercano en común con el resto de la gente fue la pandemia. Uh -huh. Pero no hay nada a nivel de expresión cultural o de movimiento o de contracultura que pueda ser este, visto y distinguido por, por, ah, es que eso está pasando ahí. It's about money and it's commercial in a way about parties and making money. And there's nothing wrong with making money, don't get me wrong, because I got paid as well, you know. But, I mean, what's bothering me more is like that commercial techno nowadays, they sell it as techno and then for example what i play is underground techno and i think it's the other way around i play just techno and the other commercial sounds is just commercial techno it's different than today because i think the world was a little bit more optimistic at that point and these days there's a lot of trouble and like you know people it's it's more expensive to go out like when people go out it's there's a lot of baggage that they're carrying to a party. At least that's what I kind of feel. And Hoy en día, cada año, la gente sube 3, 4, 5 BPMs más. Yo me acuerdo de acabar una, una sesión a 135 BPMs y decir, wow, hoy ha sido salvaje. Sí, ha ido muy rápido. Y hoy en día vas a cualquier sitio y la gente que está haciendo warm-up está a 145. Más hace unos años yo iría a, pintar, a tocar en un festival y podría tocar más mental. Mm. más hipnótico, como 127 BPM por ahí. Y ahora es imposible. Al final, ¿no? O sea, los matices del sonido, lo que importa yo creo que es un poco la actitud y, 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 la, y cómo lo hagan, ¿no? O sea, y que se vea que es de verdad, ¿no? It's, it's a weird time for techno. There's still, there's still the underground stuff. I don't really like the term underground. I think it's, it's a strange term. It doesn't really mean a lot, but it's the best word I can think of. It's a good thing, I guess, because Maybe these people that, that are getting into this like really popular techno will eventually think, you know, to look elsewhere. A las nuevas generaciones no les da miedo escarbar en la música de antes y mezclarlo con lo que ellos se imaginan que es, debería sonar ahora. Entonces es como que tienes el clásico revuelto con lo nuevo. Y bueno, y hablando de la escena, no sé, de, de entonces a la de ahora, pues ha crecido. Mm. Y es algo que, no sé, yo siempre quise. Entonces yo más bien como que me alimenté de la nostalgia de, de un momento épico que no viví, mm. ¿no? Pero siempre quise que, que, sí, que sucediera. Y creo que se está acercando. And uh, you, when you were doing techno, you couldn't really do, like, for instance, dubstep or... You yeah. can really mix genre, and what it's cool with this new generation of artists is that they kind of broke this barrier yeah. between the style. So there's always movement, and I think sometimes I or we older people we forget that for them it's new. They just go, they just start to go out, they just explore the music and the club music and what's going on, and they don't know about minimalism if they are now 18. Las conversaciones que definen lo más relevante de la historia y la cultura del techno. CSR presents. CSR presents. Una producción de Warp y Common Sense Records.